Hey guys, Johnny Golf coming at you from Augusta, Georgia. I know it's been a while since my last video, but uh, I'm here with a video that's actually going to be the most important video for you if you are becoming a tattoo artist or if you already are one. Uh, this video isn't for like brand new beginners, but if you are in tattooing, this is the most important video you're going to watch and it's the most important lesson you're going to get. Um, I'm going to talk about some things that uh, I see literally almost every artist struggle with right when they're out of their apprenticeship or when they're in the beginnings of their apprenticeship and they figured some things out and it's gonna help really break up the walls and really assist with you finding your artistic breakthrough not just uh, within artistic mediums but within tattooing as well. One of the things that I'm gonna talk about that's incredibly important is going to be to make sure that you know, you have basically an objective of what type of style of tattooing you're trying to create. Uh, what I see a lot of, almost all the time, is I see a lot of guys who are good tattoo artists, so guys and gals, that are good tattoo artists that have very strong basics, but they don't really know what kind of style they're trying to achieve. They're just kind of doing random pieces here or there, and they don't practice any other you know, artistic mediums besides just tattooing and maybe a little bit of drawing. One of the biggest, well, probably the biggest uh, tool that you have on your side as a tattoo artist that will assist you with becoming better at tattooing and with kind of finding your artistic identity is practicing mediums that directly relate to your style of tattooing that you want to do. Uh, really great examples are guys like Stu Pagden, Corey Norris, Matt Webb, Ian Parkin, Matt Curzon, all kinds of dudes like that. You'll see that those dudes, they practice all kinds of art mediums, but they're very closely related to the way that they tattoo. That is what really separates high-level tattoo artists or incredible tattoo artists from uh, tattoo artists that just kind of, we call them kinko artists. All they do is just stamp crap on people's skin and there's nothing special. Very ordinary, run-of-the-mill, choicer type artists. But if you're gonna tattoo and you're really trying to do this, you don't wanna be an everyday guy. You don't wanna just be that, that random cat at a shop that's just kinda like, people see your work and they go, meh. You, you wanna have something special. You wanna do something you care about and you wanna be a good artist at the very end of the day. And this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. If you, after you can line good, you can lay a strong line. After you can shade good, you know how to shade and blend. After you can lay color, you know, you kind of reach this point where you're like, okay, well, what now? And you just get stuck there. And after you start to practice these mediums and styles, whether it be iPad Pro, uh, the Procreate, um, whether it be just actual like physical carbon copy type practicing, you need to, the second step to this, after practicing the mediums, you need to find out what type of equipment helps you create this style in the skin. This, this right here is where people are fucking up bad. I, I'm getting messages, hundreds of this shit a day, of people saying, hey man, what kind of machine does this? Hey man, what kind of machine does that? Hey man, I'm this kind of artist, and I've been using this weird type of machine, and it's just not really working for my style where the problem right now is that people know that there are good machines out there, but they're not really sure what they're good for. Because realistically, there's not one machine that does it all. I know there's all these guys that try and go, oh yeah, my you know $1,200 pen that runs cartridges does it all. And it's like, well, yeah, you can get a crappy coil machine that does it all, but in reality, it's gonna do some things better than others. That's really the point we're driving home is that Depending on what type of style you use, the needles you use, the ink you use, the machines you use, the setup you run will help you really get the edge on other dudes. That's one of the big things. I see some guys that are just using like a Roman pen and they're trying to do American traditional, but they struggle with getting like varying line weight. And they also struggle with getting that real strong pepper shade effect or the, the layering effect because rotaries tear up the skin. So. That's the next step. Find out what works for, you know, works for the style you're creating. And the last step is you gotta make sure, and this is really important, work on making sure that your stencils 
and your reference art that's present. You gotta have your reference art present while you're working. A lot of guys don't do that. Make sure that your stencil and your reference art assist you with creating the effect that you're trying to make. Uh, I cannot tell you how many times I see guys that just think, oh, the stencil is just something you lay down. It's your roadmap. It literally helps you determine where your shades end, where your colors begin, where your varying line weight should be. If you're gonna lay down a, a bloodline, you know, you can't just have all your lines the same and just kind of go, okay, well, I'm gonna eyeball these bloodlines. That's how you make big mistakes. So make sure that your stuff is complementing the way that you work. I'm actually gonna show you guys a little bit of my uh, personal work from some of my mediums, from some of my older portfolios and stuff. You guys are gonna see where I began to develop my style for both Neo-Japanese and Neo-Traditional, and I've even stepped into more black work nowadays. You're gonna see where I began practicing different mediums because I was just kind of an ordinary you know, shop artist before, but I, and I didn't really have anyone to kind of teach me. So I had to genuinely take the time and the work on the side of learning to machine and tattoo, and I had to apply it to getting better, you know, my, any other time that I had, to working with mediums that I was not accustomed to. Stuff like, like watercolors, all kinds of markers, like colored pencils and shit, even working with graphite, stuff that I was just like, even though I did fine art, I was a painter. I did painting and charcoal, and like that was, that was where I did, like oil on canvas was kind of my bread and butter. And then I had to go to a style of like, watercolor stuff and shit that made like no sense to me. It was incredibly difficult to make the switch. But when I got better at learning how to layer in my work, it translated directly to tattooing because I realized that I was making a lot of mistakes. And that to create these effects in the skin, it was easier than I thought. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some of my uh, personal work and how it kind of related to me and uh, the kind of steps that I went through with you know developing my style. So let's check it out. So this is some of my work and some of my older portfolios. I've got a lot of shit built up, but uh, what you can see here on the right is I began experimenting with some, uh, I remember uh, Prismacolor came out with a watercolor style marker pen that was pretty cool. It had a full brush on it. And you know, as I go through some of these, you guys can see through some of my really old stuff from about four or five years back, some of the stuff that I did actively while trying to develop my style. You guys can see here that there was a lot of varying line weight and stuff that I didn't really do before. You know, uh, back when my style was developing, I didn't really know to use varying line weights, you know, in neo-traditional or American traditional, which is where I see a lot of guys get jammed up. I also didn't know that working on Japanese artwork was really key and instrumental to getting better at things like wind bars or you know just all kinds of stuff, you know? And then I have stuff like right here with like, I, I was doing work with colored pencils to try and advance some of my mediums. Some of you guys recognize this guy recently from uh, another uh, side of tattooing that we did. And then some of these guys right here are from more recent videos where I put these guys in just as some extra flash pieces, you know, as reference for the videos. But from what you can see is even right here, I have some stuff that these are little pieces that I did back when I was locked up, when I was in prison. You know, I took extra time to try and do, uh, well, this is actually a tattoo machine legend. But you know, I had stuff where I was trying to develop my style as an artist. And I didn't really, initially, I was unsure of where I was going and what I was doing. But once I knew what I wanted to do, I knew I had to really work as hard as I could, you know, to, to get better. And that was something that people didn't really understand. Uh, about seven, eight years ago, everyone was just still kind of hip firing and trying to figure out the way shit went. Now, after you've done a lot of work with your, uh, your flash and your styles of mediums and you've, you know, you know kind of where you want to go, you need to know what kind of equipment is going to affect what you're doing. Um, because I do neo-traditional and neo-Japanese, uh, Fusion Ink is the ink that I use because it has the best series of colors for what I'm doing. My palette with Fusion Ink is the strongest it has ever been. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're doing neo-traditional, if you're doing neo-Japanese, if you're doing anything in between, their Bowery colors are the best and all their other shit in between is fucking solid. It is the best in the, in the industry right now. Um, if you're doing any type of black and gray photorealism, uh, I strongly recommend using dynamic. If you're going to do photorealism, shit like that. If, uh, and when it comes to needles, if you're doing neo-traditional, neo-Japanese, these are the two, co these two companies right here. 
These are the best companies for neo-traditional style needles, period. Japanese as well. These are, uh, Black Claw is the best fucking needle company I have ever used. If you're doing really thin precision stuff, like any kind of realism, that's when I switch out to these bad boys right here. That's when I switch to my quadrants. Quadrants are fucking excellent. They have, as far as thin, super thin quality needles go, they have the best shit on the market. And that's one of the big things too. People don't realize that you can't just buy Chinese crap and hope you're going to fucking pull off some world-class shit. You, they think that, oh yeah, if I buy some Chinese rotary and just go slap the skin, it's just that it's going to, I'm going to have some ink master effect. That's not how it works, guys. If you're an apprentice, if you're a fucking newer artist, you got to really take the time to invest in not only yourself, but in your equipment and the style you're trying to create. Now we're going to uh, actually head over to the uh, finishing bench at the machine shop and we're going to show you guys the difference for some uh or basically for some of you guys that are looking to do work kind of similar to neo-traditional or neo-japanese we're going to take the time to show you guys what the difference is and for uh people who do uh, rotary work as well what the best stuff is to use if you're trying to create a particular effect so here at the machine shop we are on the finishing bench and for people that have been wondering about how they get to the next level tier when it comes to your equipment and your machines if you're doing neo-traditional if you're doing neo-japanese if you're doing any of the traditional stuff period anything with an outline people are coming to coils now this doesn't mean that fucking rotaries are all the devil or they're terrible i actually make direct drive rotaries myself but what it comes down to is this specifically if you are doing traditional work or anything with an outline you need a machine that lines you need a machine that shades. You need a machine that color packs. You need a machine that does large grouping lining. And people go, oh my God, that's so expensive. That adds up fast. People seem to fail to realize that for three really strong machines for me, it's like 800 bucks for that setup. That, that I mean, and that's, that's really fucking good, especially for how much it costs these days to get a decent machine. For one of these expensive ass rotaries with all of the fucking cartridges you're gonna need and the power supply, you're looking at twelve hundred fucking dollars. And then people don't realize that these rotaries are more used for realism. These rotary setups are for realism because if you're doing photorealism, you need to have a rotary just because the they run faster. Rotaries move just ungodly fast. They're very, very quick. Rotary or cartridge-based machines are excellent for realism, whether it's photorealism, color realism, or high contrast, horror realism, anything. You need it because you use like nine or ten different needle groupings. They're all like different brush tips, and you need those to create different effects. More importantly, sometimes these, actually most of the time, these really high-level uh, portraits or any type of realism stuff or things that don't have traditional lines or conform to traditional tattooing styles, some of them have up to 20 layers of ink. 20 goddamn layers. And rotaries hit the softest and they run the quickest. And you have to layer everything in very gently and very precisely. They're very long processes that require that they be done with a rotary. That's where rotaries have their best use. But if you're going to do traditional tattooing or anything that has to do with lines, whether it be black work or any other stuff, coils are the best right now. I see a lot of guys who are selling, uh, I saw a dude just recently in the uh, more than one secret uh, tattoo uh, artist group on Facebook where people are trying to unload rotaries. They're unloading bishops, they're unloading FK irons, they're unloading fucking Cheyenne pens. They're unloading them because they tried them and they were more traditional artists and it's, it's just not working for them. They just don't like it. They, they can't figure it out because they're that's too fast. They're too fucking fast. More importantly, they're just kind of looking at it like, you know, they don't line the best, which is the God honest truth. A lot of them don't line the best. The only rotary I know of that lines really well if you're doing traditional line work are Dan Kubin's machines. Dan Kubin's rotaries, and uh, I think it's the side crankers, that they really just throw the lines in there like hard as fuck. But that's because they operate very much with uh with a, with a linear uh type of strike at the end of the a bar so and that's really what you're looking for people think that that's one of the big things too is there's a big misconception about coils people will see my machines like these ones right here like these big fucking uh traditional style machines and think oh man i had a mickey sharp sure i had a sunskin back in the day and they sucked well a lot of guys who had that original opinion 
are coming back to coils to try stuff from private builders, whether it be me or Andy Seb or, you know, Neil Cowley or there's all kinds of guys like private builders. And we're getting tons of fucking sales right now because people are realizing, hey, I never gave coils a good chance. And when they try them out, their coils, because of smaller private builders like myself, we have really pushed the uh, the limits and really changed around traditional tattooing with coil machines where they can do some really fucking amazing things right now but the most important part of it is that you got to make sure you're complementing your style with your equipment Th that's kind of the reason why when people are buying machines they'll ask me like hey uh what you know I i'm i'm just starting out i'm an apprentice and i'm buying machines i need to know uh what kind of machines i should use and that's always a really difficult question for me to answer because it's like what do you mean? What kind of machines should you use? I mean, are you doing like really thin, fine line Japanese? Are you doing like really fucking heavy, bold, like super old school, traditional uh, Bowery type work? You know, what are you doing? What are you trying to What are you trying to create? Because I can build the machine with a specific use in its intention, and it will operate exactly the way it's supposed to where if you're using big fat lines it'll lay your lines down real crisp and clean on the first pass if you're looking to try and pepper shade with it it'll actually create that nice you know uh pattern dot or stippling that runs up the sides if you're trying to do stipple work like black work it'll be like a slower machine that'll leave behind you know really perfect little lines all the way up little tiny dots that'll you know that are dainty yet you know you know they have a lot of finesse to them so they accent the work you got to know what kind of style you're trying to create. That's at the very end of the day. This isn't a sales pitch. This isn't some bullshit. This isn't me trying to tell people to go draw more. At the end of the day, you got to have that particular aim in sight. You got to know what you want to create. And you have to begin to study the medium and artwork to begin to be able to peel back layers and learn how each layer was created. And then you can go through and create it with your own equipment you will begin to understand how to do it as you practice more and more with an ordinary medium that relates to what you're doing and at the end of the day that is the most difficult part of tattooing no one really tells you this guys kind of just wander aimlessly in the tattoo community for years trying to figure this out and this is the hardest part right here Thanks for watching, guys. This is Johnny Galt in Augusta, Georgia. Remember to like, rate, subscribe. You guys can uh, follow me on Instagram at johnnygalt001. Uh, and if you guys want to, you know, just chit chat or throw out some information based on what we have here in the comments, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you whenever I can. Thanks for watching, guys.